So let's learn how to create a subgraph in just five minutes. So a few weeks ago, I made a similar type of video on deploying a subgraph. So I want to take a few steps back and look at actually creating the subgraph itself that we can go ahead and deploy. Following a tutorial that I also released a few weeks back in a Twitter thread, we're going to be making a subgraph that indexes transfers of Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs. So before we begin, if you want to go ahead and head to that thread that's linked below this video, read through it briefly and grab the links to all of the pastebin files that I've included in those tweets. We'll be using the code included in those files for the video today. Let's start by making sure we have the graph client installed in our system. We can do that with npm install. So we're installing graph protocol and then graph client. Um, if you already have this installed, it'll just update it or change stuff around. If you don't have this installed, then you'll want to make sure to run this command. All right, so now that that's installed, we can go ahead and create a directory for our subgraph. We're going to name this chain stack. Let's open that directory. And just to make sure that we have our graph client installed, we can run the graph command here. And we can see that the client is correctly installed. So let's start our subgraph project here by doing graph init. This will start the initialization process and run us through a few basic configurations that'll throw a template manifest as well as a few basic files into our, our directory here. We can start by choosing the protocol that we're deploying to. In this case, we have Arweave, Ethereum, Near, Substreams, and whatnot. So let's go ahead and choose Ethereum. Now we can choose between hosted service or subgraph studio. Because we're doing Ethereum mainnet in this case, we can go ahead and just throw in that run that on a subgraph studio. And of course, we'll be deploying this um, through Chainstack, which you can learn how to do also in the additional video that I've linked below this tweet. For this, we can choose a subgraph slug. We can do base C, choose a directory to create the subgraph in. For this, I'll just name it Chainstack subgraph. This will create a subdirectory within the main directory that we've created. We can now choose the network that we're deploying to. In this case, it'll be the Ethereum mainnet. Now we can paste in the contract address of the Board Ape Yacht Club contract right there. This will ask for a start block, but we'll be defining that later on when we paste in our manifest file. So let's just keep this as zero for now. For the contract name, we can name this basey. And we'll want to do yes for this. All right, so now we have our basic directory filled out, so we can open that up in our file explorer here. So now we'll need to fill in three main files before this will work properly. That'll be the schema file, the manifest file, and our TypeScript file we'll get to at the end. Let's start with our manifest file, which was a file primarily initialized by the initialization process that we just went through. We'll want to go back to the pastebin file that I linked on the thread below and then paste it into our manifest. Let's start by opening subgraph.yaml. That's our manifest file. And in here, you know, we can see things like the name of the contract, the contract address, the start block, the entities that are defined in the schema, and the event handlers that are defined in the TypeScript file. So of course, this doesn't really fit our need. Remember, we're trying to index transfers of Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs here. So let's go ahead and grab the manifest file that I have linked in that page bin and paste it in here. We have the ABI defined, and we have the address, the start block, the proper entities, as well as the event handler here. Let's save this. Let's now open our schema. This is gonna be schema.graphql. And here, in a similar fashion, we'll need to paste in the contents of the paste bin linked in that thread into this file. You can see here, we have the transfer entity, which is, of course, the event that we're listening for. We have the board ape, which is the NFT itself. And we have the property, which is a metadata or the attributes of the NFT. So now that we have our manifest defined and our schema defined, I want to go ahead and actually define the event handler itself here, which is the transfer event. We can do that through the SRC folder. And then we have the TypeScript file here. Now in here, similar to the other ones, we'll want to go ahead and paste in the contents of the paste bin in that thread. Essentially what this will be doing is defining the handle, handle transfer event, which is what we'll be indexing in the subgraph itself. You can see we have handle transfer right there, as well as the board ape entity. We have all the transfer to, from, token ID, block number, transaction has, et cetera. And we have all of the NFT attributes as well. So we'll have a pretty complete look on all of the transfers and the data that we're indexing here once our subgraph is deployed. So now we have our manifest file, our schema file, and our mappings file, or in this case, our TypeScript file defined. So with all three of these files defined, we're ready to go ahead and build the subgraph itself. Exit this out, open our terminal back up. We want to make sure that we're actually in that subdirectory that we created. So we can do cd chain stack subgraph. And let's start with running graph Cogen. This will automatically generate some files based on the information that we entered in the subgraph. Types generate successfully. 
Now let's go ahead and run graph build. So now we've created our subgraph. We've initialized it through the graph init function. We've defined our schema, manifest, and mappings file. We've ran graph cogen to save all of our changes, and we've compiled the subgraph through graph build. This subgraph is now ready to go ahead and be deployed to the Chainstack hosted service.